Students, welcome back to the biology class. In our previous class, we discussed photosynthesis. We learned that it is a process in plant life in which green plants are able to make their own food. Carbon dioxide combined with water in the presence of light and chlorophyll to produce glucose and oxygen. Today, we will be discussing different conditions necessary for photosynthesis. Also, we will be discussing significance of photosynthesis. So, to cook food, the primary necessity is energy. It can be in the form of heat or electricity. Similarly, plants require light energy for the manufacture of their food. So, the first condition necessary for photosynthesis is sunlight. Light trapped by leaves help in the conversion of raw material into sugar. Now, what do you think? Is light the only requirement for preparation of food? No. Let us see what are the other requirements. Well, we also need water to cook our food. Similarly, for plants to manufacture their food along with light, water is required. The roots of the plants absorb water and minerals from the soil and transport it to the other parts through a network of tubes called xylem. Now all animals including human beings respire. They take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. Now there are millions of organisms on the earth respiring, giving out carbon dioxide. As a result, carbon dioxide level in atmosphere should shoot up. But this does not happen, as the level of carbon dioxide is maintained by the plants. For most parts of the day, plants take up carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. So the next requirement of photosynthesis is the presence of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide gas present in the atmosphere is absorbed through small openings present in the leaves called stomata. Students, green plants and leaves maintain carbon dioxide and oxygen balance in our air. That is why it is advised to plant more trees. Next requirement for photosynthesis is presence of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the green pigment inside the chloroplasts of the plant cells that make leaves green. The chlorophyll absorbs light. Apart from all these requirements, an optimum temperature of about 20 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius is required for photosynthesis to take place. Let us uh, watch this video to understand the different requirements for photosynthesis. The important things needed by a plant to perform photosynthesis are sunlight, chlorophyll, carbon dioxide, and water. All plants use energy from the sunlight to make food. The part of the leaves that catches and absorbs the sun energy is called chlorophyll. Remember, it is chlorophyll that gives leaves their green color. Plants obtain carbon dioxide gas from the air tiny holes called stomata present on the leaves help this carbon dioxide to enter the leaves. The next important thing needed by the plant is water. Plants get water from the soil with the help of roots. Just like the straw that you use to drink juice, the roots and stems of a plant have narrow tubes that help carry water from the roots all the way up to the leaves. The veins in the leaves help to distribute this water to all the parts of the leaf. And then the recipe is complete. Just like how your mother cooks food in the kitchen, the chlorophyll uses the sun's energy to combine carbon dioxide and water to prepare food for the plant. The food prepared is in the form of sugar and oxygen is also given out by the leaves in the process. Now let us discuss the significance of photosynthesis. 
Photosynthesis is important for sustaining life. It is the ultimate source of oxygen and energy for all living organisms. Photosynthesis provides food for all living beings. The process of photosynthesis occurs in green plants which are the primary producers in a food chain. It helps in growth and development of plants. It fixes atmospheric carbon dioxide and releases oxygen in the atmosphere. So in today's video we discussed conditions necessary for photosynthesis which are sunlight water and minerals carbon dioxide chlorophyll and temperature we also discussed significance of photosynthesis now let me ask you a question polar regions have very negligible vegetation why think about it and we will discuss it in our virtual class till then stay safe thank you